Look at the little conversation hearts. They're so cute. You probably know them as little candies, and I love them for Valentine's. But today, we made bigger ones. Yay! <laughs> so it's Sew Together Tuesday. I'm Teresa Coates. I'm the National Educator for Shannon Fabrics, and we are back with Sew Together Tuesday one more time. This time we're in Arizona, so we just keep moving. Last week we were in Ontario, California with Clover. If you missed that one, you should go watch it because it was a good one. This week we're back. We're in uh, Tempe, Arizona, which is a suburb of Phoenix. Okay, I'm getting nods from the audience. Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we are here at a shop called Bull Queen, and they have a few different locations, and we are at their Tempe location in the classroom. So, um, very excited to be here. Hawk, you look like you're going to tell me something. Nope, we're just good. Looking at stuff? Yep, okay. Just looking right. at stuff. Make sure we got good video, good sound. Everybody can hear us. We're doing all right. Yeah. All right. So far, um, so good. So thanks for joining us. We've been um, on this little tour. It's been super fun. This week, we're doing a fun Valentine theme project and surprisingly in enough time to actually make it before the holiday. So I'm kind of proud of myself that we planned it well enough that you can actually make this in time. Okay, we'll be making the Young at Heart pillow today. Before we get started, I want to remind you that if you share the video, you will be entered to win. We'll be giving away at the end. We'll choose a random winner. Ellen will. Thank you, Ellen. Um, she'll choose a random winner and you will get your very own beginner box, which is a super great kit. I think it's still running in the video at the beginning um, that has three one yard cuts that you can make. And it has a pattern book that comes with it and pins and um, needles and thread. that You can make all six of those projects from the stuff that's in that box. So it's a fun way to get started sewing with cuddles. So if you're new to it, if you've been watching the videos and been like, I really want to sew with cuddle, but I don't know where to start. This is it. That beginner box is it. So, um, and if you're, you know, you've been sewing this stuff for a while, it's a great way to introduce your friend or a grandchild, a child to working with cuddle fabric. So super fun. We'll be giving that away at the end of the show. Okay. So share the video, get entered to win, draw a name at the end. You'll win. Um, and if you're here, we'll be giving away a kit. I don't think it's the inner box. No. Um, but we're giving away a kid at the show too. So thanks. Um, all right. Can I get started then? Let's do it. I gotta like check off all the boxes of what I need to say. So this is what we're making today. This cute little pillow. Okay. So we're gonna do a variation of this. This is a fun little project, and we did it in two different ways. So the pattern is called Young at Heart. I'm gonna try to show you the stuff. So this is just my printout version of it. Okay, so if you go down to the blog, over to the blog at shannonfabrics.com slash blog, you'll be able to download this pattern, okay? And you just download the pattern as well as the letters so that you can write your own little messages on here, okay? So we're going to do it two different ways. I'm going to show you two different things today, how to do it via applique if you just have a sewing machine, and how to do it via embroidery if you have an embroidery machine. So um, you can go, like I said, go to shannonfabrics.com slash blog. You'll be able to download that pattern. I think there are two different patterns if you get the letters. Um, and that's what size this makes. So it's a nice, it's a good size heart. Okay. Okay. And we have a few different things, um, different phrases that you can put on here. So we have a few of them. I think, how many did I do? Six or something like that. That I did, you can write whatever you want with it if you're going to do, you know, with your own letters. Or use the embroidery that's in your own machine. But we do have a few that if you are interested, you and you're watching it live, you can email me and um, you can and I will send you the email file or the embroidery files for it. Otherwise, if you're watching this later on YouTube and the live is long gone, then you should be able to go to crinkledreams.com and be able to download the patterns. OK, so those are the embroidery files. All right. Mary, you want to help me? <laughs> <laughs> I give you some hearts. Okay, pass them around, let people touch and feel. Okay, so we want to start with embroidery because this I like this pattern because it actually has three options. You can do embroidery, you could do applique, or you could do nothing on it. You could just use a fun fabric on the front of it. We have that new Candy wow. Hearts fabric that's out there um, that you could totally do this on the front with or on all the sides if you wanted to. Um, so you can use whatever fabric you want. Make yourself a heart pillow. Use it all the time. Okay, but today we're going to do the embroidery. So I have, um, I'm using the Brother Luminaire today. So this is a combo machine. So we're going to actually do both with it today. This is set up currently in the embroidery function. We're going to finish doing the embroidery and then we'll actually be able to sew with it too, which is pretty cool. So you, if you're limited on space, 
this is a great option for being able to do both the embroidery and sewing and we'll hopefully get it to work and we'll do the whole thing today on this one little machine. I say little machine. It's a beast. Okay. <laughs> so I don't know what, what is that? That's probably three feet. looks like three, three feet. feet. Yeah. yeah it takes up thinking. way more of our little table than usual. Yes. Than so the, than the, than the crescendo does. It just keeps going. It's a, it's a doozy, but it does a ton of stuff. Super cool. Um, okay. Lift that up just a little bit. Uh, all right. So I've got it set up. But what I wanted to talk to you before we get too far. So we did a couple of different shows. We did an embroidery show um, a while ago, and I think it was called Embroidery Tips for Cuddle Minky Plush Fabric. Yes. <laughs> did I say it right? You did. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a YouTube video about how to do embroidery uh, on cuddle. And we did it with a couple of experts from um, one from uh, baby lock and one, uh, Sheila from baby moon designs who does uh, embroidery designs for a living also is one of our brand ambassadors and know they both know a ton about embroidery. So if you are new to embroidery or you're new to embroidering with cuddle, that would be a great place to start to get a whole lot of information about working with cuddle and embroidery. Uh, we're going to go over a little bit of it today. Some of the things that I learned from that experience I'm using today and um, making cuddle work with or yeah, cuddle work with embroidery. So cuddle, is a thicker fabric and it's stretchy and it has this knack to it. Okay, that's what makes embroidering on it different. So one of the things that's really important is that you stabilize it really well. So the way that I do that is I use, I have it here somewhere. Um, I use a cutaway stabilizer. So that's what I've been recommended, not tear away. So use a cutaway. So this is a cutaway stabilizer that has a paper backing. So when I put it into the I was going to get an extra one and I totally spaced it. So when you put it into your hoop, you're just going to hoop your stabilizer. Okay. So you're not going to stable hoop your fabric as well when you're using cuddle. What it does is it leaves like a burn mark. I think it's called um, where it will mess up your nap really badly. So what I do is I put this in, this stuff is super cool. You can use just a regular um, uh, cutaway stabilizer and then use 505 to put it on there, but I use this stuff. And I'm just scraping along here with my cute little bite mini. One more thing that the stiletto is good for. That's right. What did you just do? <laughs> Very excited. I haven't actually you seen you do that before. Yeah, so then it just cuts the paper and I pull this all out. Okay, and then I have this nice sticky spot. Okay. So I'm going to put this on here just for right now because it's the only piece of cuddle I have. But bink, it just sticks on there and doesn't move. Uh, okay, so that's what will stabilize your fabric while you're sewing and it works really well. So you can use a stabilizer that doesn't have a sticky back and use the 505 spray. Okay, but you can also use this stuff and this is what I like because it sticks pretty darn well. Do you know what brand that is? Um, I believe this is Floriani is what I have. Yeah. F L O R I A N I Floriani. Okay, so that works really, really well. And I was using just a regular cutaway stabilizer, and I was using a thicker one, and then spray basting it on. And I really didn't like the way that it was working. And then I found this, and I like it. It leaves uh, when we're done, we'll see. It leaves a nice thin backing on it, and doesn't make it super stiff. So some of the cutaways I've noticed will make it a little stiffer than I want it to be. So this works really well. Okay, so that's the way I've got this one in here already set up so if we look over here you can see I've got you can even see the corner of it where I cut it around there okay so I've got it stuck down I took my fabric I cut a 16 by 20 piece 18 by 20 piece um put it onto batting so we used a little bit of thin batting on here those are spray based together and then it's put onto my um what is that thing called now? The hoop. The hoop. Thank you. The hoop. The hoop. <laughs> With the cutaway stabilizer <laughs> on there. Like, oh. brain just like totally left. I was like, I don't know what it is. That thingy majabi right there? Just stick it right on there. <laughs> is that um? Is that the magnetic? Is that a magnetic hoop or no? No, that's a little screw on one. The magnetic gotcha. one is on my on my wish list. Christmas is coming. Um, <laughs> I think I think I saw Mole Queen have them in the shop. 
<laughs> yeah, they did happen. They do happen. I used them um, once before. I think when we were doing the Kimber Bears at Cali. Oh, um, yeah. then we, and then I used those. And that was super nice. Those little magnetic ones. Great. So that's what I use on the bottom. Then I put the fabric on here. I like to, whether I'm doing embroidery or I'm doing applique, I like to put my batting onto my fabric first. And that kind of negates the stretch that it otherwise has because it does like to stretch. Isn't it fabric? That's what it does. Um, so why, why we like it is, you know, it has that stretch. So if I put batting onto the back of it, it'll sort of stabilize it, won't let it move around too much. Then I stick it onto the, the um, sticky back. It's fine. It doesn't move around. And it really does help cure that, um, that wrinkle thing that can happen when you're embroidering on cuddle, because oftentimes it wants to start to pull in as you're embroidering. So if you do, um, and we will talk about more in that other video, we talk about like the basting boxes and that sort of thing. But I found that if I stabilize it to the batting and then put it onto sticky back, it stays much better and doesn't tend to do that. Okay. So that's my thing. Then on here we have the um, water soluble stabilizer, which is this clear stuff. And it has like kind of a grippy side and a not grippy side. Put a grippy side down, tape it in place, and then embroider it. This is really important because it makes a huge difference in how the actual, the finish looks. I did, oh no, I embroidered over it. <laughs> Never mind. I like, I messed it up the other day and I didn't put it on there. And then I just embroidered over the top of it again. I'll show you later what that looked like fine um <laughs> but what happens is if it isn't um not even if it isn't like completely covered the fibers will kind of pop up through the stitches so putting that water soluble stabilizer keeps everything where it's supposed to be and it's really really important when you're working with cuddle and embroidering so we'll use it when we do the applique as well and that's in a different for a different reason that we use the water soluble but on here it's really important i often forget it and i start to go and then i have to redo it um, but it makes a big difference in the final outcome. So let's get this guy started. And what was the what were the specs on the batting again? I'm sorry. Um, the the what like what the, the batting? Yeah, is. yeah. What is the batting? The batting is just the uh, Quilter's Dream Poly request. I have the bag somewhere too. Is it yeah. a eighty twenty? Uh, no, it's polyester. Oh, one hundred percent polyester batting. One hundred percent polyester Check. because polyester fabric. I just use polyester batting. You can see how thin it is which I appreciate because it just really is a stabilizer then and doesn't add any depth to it. Okay. You can see it's just super thin. All right. So I like that, but the batting makes a big difference in keeping it stable. Also, if you're doing applique with it, if you're doing like um, machine applique where you do like the embroidery and the applique, it'll really make it pop if you have the batting behind it. Which I kind of like. So, um, all right, let me see if I can get this. We stopped at mid function earlier. So I'm hoping we can just get it to, to go we don't have any trouble with the the 505 spray uh nope. with the needle the on the embroidery machine nope not at all i have never had any issues with the 505 um doing anything funky it's just a it's a really good product it doesn't smell and um it doesn't stick things up so there are a few different brands of basing spray that are out there i won't name them because i don't want to be mean but they're not the same quality of basting spray. And I will say that the OD basting spray is definitely the least smelly and the best sticky. We have found that if there's always. I'm going to come around and get, um, you know, a sewist view of what's okay. going on here. But there's oh, always there's a number an on here that has a date. Mine says 21, but there is a date on there. And you want to make sure to check that if it says 2019 or something on the bottom of yours. And sometimes they say 2020 and 2019. They'll say the whole thing. Um, the older ones will get less sticky. So the chemical compound, something, it does change over time. So got it. Make sure. So go ahead. You can check that out real nice and close. So what it's doing is just going to stitch back and forth. It's going to take a few minutes to do it. Um, we should put up. Oh, something happened. Let me just mine. Okay. Let's see it up there. Just fine. Yep. Your computer crashed. Not, not everybody else's. I'm glad we just keep plugging right along. <laughs> we'll just keep, I was going to, you know. Ingredients? Yeah, ingredients. Well, let's do it. That. You can hear us, Michael. There, there we are. Awesome. Um, all right. So what you're going to need, <laughs> you're going to need <laughs> a half a yard of Cuddle 3 or Lux Cuddle, a little scrap of Cuddle 3 in white if you're going to do the applique. 
you want to download the Young at Heart pillow pattern from shannonfabrics.com slash blog. We'll get you there a lot quicker. It's not in the free pattern section yet. Okay, so we have to make some um, a few little revisions to the photo and then we'll get it over in the free pattern. So we download it from the blog today. All right, you want to make sure you have a 9014 stretch needle for the sewing part. Craft knife, which is that Ulfa SAC-1 that I love so much. A felt tip marker or ballpoint pen. Hand sewing needle. Long flower head pins, of course, from Clover. We'll do that with the applique and when we're sewing it together. Micro serrated scissors, because they work best with the cuddle fabrics. A point turner. Some polyester fiber fill, and we will talk a bunch about this at the end. Polyester thread. Of course, embroidery thread for what we're doing now. Um, the rotary cutter and mat for cutting out your pieces. Walking foot, which will be optional and um, definitely recommended. Water soluble stabilizer, paper bag fusible web, and sticky back cutaway stabilizer are all optional depending on what you're doing, okay? So depending all on which right. if you wanna do an embro embroidery, you wanna do an applique, or you want to just leave it plain, you absolutely can do all of those. And you'll just need some different tools for each one of those, okay? So if you don't have, don't get a hold of me and get the embroidery file. Okay, I'm gonna try to go into the studio. All right. Um, we're, we're gonna, I'm gonna, we're gonna do it behind the scenes. Okay. Hey, look at that. So there we go. I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are a lot of most um, embroidery machines will come with several different fonts in them. So they actually have fonts available. You can put your own in there. Most of them have a block font. Um, I use Embrilliant, which is a in embroidery design software that I use to design these. But most of the embroidery machines will have some sort of a basic font that you can use in there that you can type in your own letters. Um, I know the Pathfinder does it. This machine actually has a whole like creative studio in it that lets you design your own uh, embroidery patterns right here, which is kind of crazy. So you could do all sorts of different things if you wanted to write somebody's name on it or you know a whole different thing. You can absolutely do that. It has some like clip art and stuff in it and you can adjust those and yep. you've got it. Yep. Yep. So if you wanted to come up with your own little phrase and you wanted to say, you know, love you, Sam, I totally do it. So. Oh. Kiss me, kiss me, Kate. Yeah, kiss who's, me, Kate. Who's, who's Kate? I don't know. I and mean, we know a few Kates, but. <laughs> okay. So that'll stitch all the way out and then we'll take this out. Um, yeah. What was the other thing I was going to tell them? I can't remember now. I can't remember. Here's the pattern. Get it. Um, we did get the pattern. <laughs> get it. Um, oh, that's what I was going to say. It's the piecing on it. So we cut out. I wanted to find that because I said 16 by 20, 18 by 20. I can't remember. Um, 20 by 20 batting squares. If you start with there, then you'll be able to cut it down. Um, I like to baste it on. So what I do is I cut out the heart. I trace around it. The big huge pattern. That's what I brought over. That's what I wanted to show them. The pattern. So this is the pattern blown up on my home printer and then just taped together. This is how big it will be. Okay. So you have your 2020 piece. I traced this on the back of the cuddle. I cut it out and then I basted that onto with spray basted it onto the batting and then cut that out. Okay. So I don't try to um, put it on the fold. It says to put it on the fold. I don't. I do one side. I trace it. I flip it over. I trace it. Then I put it onto the batting. You can trace it onto the batting, put it onto the cuddle, and then cut them both out. Whatever suits you. Doesn't really matter. It won't change anything. Is it going to sing a song? That's what I want to know. See? <laughs> Ta da! <laughs> <laughs> there has to be some cute little jingle it would do. You're done. Yeah. <laughs> it says finished embroidery. Mine says something. I can't remember what it says, but it basically like is happy. Happy little face. It's like, look, you're done. You did it. Yay. Okay. So now we're going to take this out of here. Let me take this off. Let's see if I can work this out. Not break anything. It's not my machine. It's a lot scarier. <laughs> we're going to talk about what the, the final height is on those letters for this pattern size. Yeah. So, um, the height should be two inches. Um, two two inches. These are two inches, and yeah, they're just the same. Good. So this is this is um a slightly different font. It won't look exactly the same because two different people made them. Um, so there's our pattern designer Rose did these, and then I did these on there. 
Okay. So two inches is how big they are. And that worked really, really well for that. So I will say that was kind of a guess as to <laughs> will that work? And then it did. It's great. I love the size of it. Okay. Uh -huh. So I want to I want to ask a question. You yeah. said we were going to try not to get into the weeds about mm -hmm. the particulars of this, but knockdown stitch, no knockdown stitch. There's no knockdown stitch on this because these are big, bold, um, you know, letters on here. They're, Got it. they're big. They're not good. They don't really need the knockdown stitch. A knockdown stitch would be more if you were going to do some fine lettering or something like that. Uh, we really just recommend that you do like bigger and bolder on here is better. Especially so. for these conversation hearts, right? Yeah, yeah. totally. Totally. So I'm just going to tear this off. Let's see how much I can get out. I have to go back and use my stiletto to tear some out there. Okay. So this just comes out. It is water soluble stabilizer. Do not use water on it. Okay. So if you use water on it, all it does is sort of melt into your fabric. And that's not cool. Um, the thing is, though, that if you wash it, it will come out of little pieces. Um, if you get little bits stuck that are hard to get out. Okay, look how cute that is. I like the way that it just kind of puffs up in the middle of the yellow. Let's use my little. See, I always tell people I use the stiletto for all sorts of things and not just like just cuddle. It's always, you know, the embroidery and all sorts of stuff. So all of it came out really nicely. Get rid of my little bitty tape there. Okay. Good. All right. So now with this one, so also I just embroidered the big thing. Okay, so this is just a square of cuddle that I embroidered. Now we have to cut out the heart. Okay, so when we do it with the applique, I will do the heart cutting first. When I do the embroidery, I do it after. That's really just because I like to misplace the embroidery on the fabric. We'll see if I got it halfway right today. Um, I'm really good at putting it in the wrong place. So if I cut it out and then I don't get it in the right place, it's just in the wrong place. If I don't cut it out, and now I cut it, I get to move it a little. Got it. You, yeah, little you, can, you can correct. Yeah. So I'm going to take the this guy out and move that out of my way. So hold on. Come behind you. Get rid of some things. Okay. All right. So now... I think I'm going to take the embroidery module off, okay? Okay. Because it's really, it takes up half my mat. Yeah, you need you need your mat back. I Got it. Any working space. Okay. Push all the buttons. Okay. You can push everything off the other end of the table. All right. So, yeah. Wait for the crash. <laughs> I think that part weighs the very most. Goodness. If you need some little weight bearing exercises, you could just lift that, that module. Probably would be good for me. All right. So here is my part. So when you get it in your pattern, it looks like this. And then we blow it up and it looks like this. Okay. I will say that finding out what 200, figuring out what 200% is going to be, that's what it is, which seems not right for me. Like I will tell you this, this is how my brain works is that I'm like, this is not 200%, but it is. Cause if I look at the length of this, it gets 200% longer. Twice as big. So Got sense. it. Yep. So that's really where I have to look because this seems a lot more than 200% to me. Okay. Got it. But that's how it works. So I just did this on my home printer. I took this piece. I, Enlarged it two hundred percent, and then I just moved it around so that I got the whole thing taped it together. Very, very picky. Not picky. So yeah, it's about there. It's fine. Okay. So I want to get it this way first because I didn't get it really close to the edge, and I knew that was going to happen. Oh yeah, you're and right there. <laughs> Mary laughs at me. You watch me do it. Play, <laughs> playing seam, seam chicken over there. I was. So I also found a marked on here. This is my little pattern. I was going to measure this. Let me do it real quick. It's four inches down is basically where I figured out I wanted to center the letters. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So where I centered the letters is about four inches down from here. All right, and that seemed to work pretty well. If you don't like it this high up, move it down a little bit. It's totally fine, OK? 
Okay, that's yeah, your preference. You get to put them wherever you want to. But as long as, long as you're cutting it out after. <laughs> yes. Otherwise, you're just stuck with it wherever it got. <laughs> right. <laughs> this is how add, it works. Add, add an angle. Yes. <laughs> make it make it fancy. Make it fancy. Okay, so I'm gonna get this all the way over to the edge. I'm putting my line right down the middle of my XOs. Okay. And I'm gonna be super careful. I'm going to start weighing it down with things. Because pattern weights got packed. Wait, are you just sharpieing right, just sharpieing on, right on the front of the cuddle? Yeah, I, so this is something you don't do particularly often. It's something that you don't see me do particularly often. You do have to have it in the right place. Because once you've got it on here, you're... You're not going to be out of luck. You're committed. You are committed. That is. You're in a committed relationship with the heart placement. Yeah. Check. There is no getting out of it now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to move this. I want to get that so that it will go match up. Okay. Mostly because I really can't see it as well from the back. You could you could do it from the back probably and be just fine. But I like to live dangerously. Oh, yeah, that's right. true, actually. On the back of the batting, you probably can see the lettering, right? Mm -hmm. A little bit. But I like, I don't know. Like, for me, this is one of those things, and it's probably totally just a personal thing, is that for me, visually, I had, like, I did try it that way first. And I had a harder time visualizing what, visualizing what it would look like from the back. Gotcha. So I did it from the front. It's worked. I keep doing it that way. I'm not asking you to do it that way. Just know that if you do... We're sisters in arms about it. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead she said this. whilst wielding scissors. <laughs> the arms just got different. Right there. Okay. So as you can see, it sticks really, really well. None of it moved. It's great. I'm just going to cut a little bit off. We're just going to leave a little bit, about a, I don't know, a quarter of an inch or a little more. Um, hanging off the side. I did find that in some of the places, and this happens sometimes when you're doing it, is that because these stitches are so close, it basically kind of perforates it and it'll want to tear. But as soon as you start to try to like, oh, I could just tear that instead, it starts to distort your fabric. So really just don't do it. Avoid. So we're going to leave this on. Got mm -hmm. it. Okay. Just a little bit of the stabilizer stays on there behind it. Okay. And that's what actually like stabilizes the fabric completely. Because otherwise it really does, it'll distort around those edges. So I wanted to show you a couple other. I had a couple other little embroidery things. Yeah. So this is one that was not done by me, some by somebody else. They sent it, and this is a um a cutaway. And you can see it did pretty good. There's a tiny bit of wobble that you probably can't see but it's not it's really pretty darn good this one i did and i decided i was going to um tear it can you see all the the wrinkle so that's from me not doing it right got okay. it so you see this or this does not lay flat and that's why what's the it's back of I that look like it. it's a super cute little bear oh <laughs> so the front of it i meant <laughs> yes, got it. The other side. <laughs> the other yeah, side. The other side is adorable. I really love okay. it. I think it's super cute, but you can see how it distorted it. And it's because I used a tear away because I didn't want to leave the stabilizer on the back. What I realized is that it's better to leave a little bit of the stabilizer on the back and you can't see it from the front at all. It just gives the the fabric a little bit more oomph right there. And especially in a project like this where we're embroidering it and then we're gonna stuff it. If it has a little bit of extra stiffness in that little spot right there it's fine the thing is too that that stuff will often get softer the more you wash it so you could wash it before you um stuffed it oh uh, i've certainly had embroidered shirts and stuff where this the, the stabilizer was still on the back of the monogram right. and it totally uh, it softens soften up, up after a couple of washes right. that's that makes total sense something like this who cares it's on the inside of your pillow <laughs> got it <laughs> it'll be fine okay so now we get to make a mess because at this point we're cutting out the cuddle, the Lux cuddle, after it's been made, which is not generally how I like to do it because it's messy. Um, I'm gonna put half my tools back on this one. Thank you. But we're gonna do it anyway. <laughs> Let's make a mess. All right. Let's make a mess. 
sometimes you have to, and then we'll just vacuum it. It's fine. Okay. So I'm just going to use my rotary cutter and cut right along this line. This is also my um, seam line. So it's fine. I have a seam allowance after that. Okay, so I'm just going to cut. Right there will be there. consequences. Yes. <laughs> Probably unintended ones, knowing me. Okay, oops. Okay, I'm just going to try to move this just a little bit. And um, try not to get too much of this cuddle mess to go other places. Okay. The less you move it, the better yes. after it's so, cut. Really, like people are always like, you're really gentle with it. And I'm like, I am because I don't want the mess everywhere. I really, really don't like it. So I try to move it as softly as I can. Okay. I'm just going to put this to the side right now. I did put a trash can right here. And now I have all of this mess that's here. And I'm actually just going to vacuum it. All right. Anybody so wearing headphones? To, Hold up. So if he wants to mute me for a second, can you do that? Oh, I can do that. I, okay. There. Mute me and I'll. And we're back. <laughs> Good enough. Okay. Yeah. We got, you know, we got a few complaints on YouTube. People who didn't like me back in the year. So, um, <laughs> so I'll mute myself. It's fine. I get so it. We have a little bit of mess that will still come off. I'm going to give this a little shake, get the rest of it off. Okay. But really, you can see you don't have to make a ton of mess. People are always like, it just gets everywhere. I'm like, stop moving it so much. Okay. <laughs> That's really... That's really the key is just not to move it too much. Vacuum the crud out of it right away and um, it'll be good to go. Okay. So there is our embroidery version. Great. It's pretty cute, right? Super cute. Look at that. All right. Pretty cute. I that really like it. Okay. So then I'm going to show you there. So then we're going to do the version with applique. So let's give this a shot and see what happens. All right. Okay. We're going to move some things around, get our machine set up. All so right. I'm doing this one on Cuddle 3 because I like the way that it embroiders. So that's why I'm doing it this way. You could do this just the same on here. I find that I don't like the embroidery or the applique on Lux Cuddle as much personally. And that is just a personal thing. And since I get to choose the samples I'm making, that's what I did. Okay, so we're going to do this. I cut out a couple of them. So we have a couple of different ways, two different ways of doing this. So I want to talk that through just a little bit. All right, so on this one, we just used um, a backing, trace the letters onto the backing from the pattern. Oh, okay, so hang on. So what kind of backing? And is there, is there a stitch around it? There no. is not a stitch around it. It's just ink. So... Um, we traced the, this is a, just a stabilizer, um, just a webby sort of stuff. I can't remember. It was on a roll in my sewing stuff. Like Pellon or something. It's like a Pellon or okay. something. Got um, it. I don't, I didn't have any of the iron on, but if you had the SF 101, this would be a great place to use it. So just trace that on the back of the SF 101, iron it onto here. You'll be fine. And you use Medium the heat, heat oh, polyester sorry. synthetic setting on your iron. Just press it on and then it'll be stuck there and you'll have the letters traced out. Okay. So, but this is on the back with the spray, the, the this 505. Is on with the 505 spray. Okay. Got it. Yep. Yep. Exactly. I'm with you. Because I don't have everything I want all the time. Um, join, join the crowd, right? So these were the letters, trace them out, put them on there. We also did it another way that you could, and you could do this. Oh, I just thought you could do this without any fabric too. Okay. But the other way you could do it. Without any is fabric. Put, yeah. I'll explain. Uh oh. All right. My brain that is was... getting creative. I'm going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. I start thinking like, oh, I can do that. Oh, I can do that. <laughs> so you could take your fabric, put it down here, put this over the top of it, stitch it down, and then cut out. Okay. That's totally doable too. The only problem with that that we were talking about is that, and thanks, Mary, for brainstorming with me today. Um, is the problem with doing that is then the cutting out that top layer can get a little bit fidgety because you're cutting out the cuddle on top of cuddle and especially if you were doing it on top of a lux cuddle so you could but i just realized you could actually just put this on here tape this in position 
and stitch around it like with a nice zigzag stitch or something or a satin stitch if you wanted to just the letters and it would just be the outline of the letters on here and then tear that off oh oh, oh i sense? see i see what you're saying sure you could use a decorative stitch on and um totally. they basically free motion totally because it machine. would just it when you took it off it would just be an embossed basically it would look like it was quilted oh okay to be those letters which would be a way of doing it that would be the easiest way to do it. Got it. Okay. And this is just with water soluble stabilizer. And I love this stuff for using it on things like this where I want to transfer a design because I can trace it on here really easily. We use the Sharpie on this and it works totally fine. You would just tape this in position and then so either with or without fabric behind it. Okay. Did that? That does make sense. I, I, I think so. Does that make sense out there? Okay. Okay, I'm getting the nod, so I'm going to assume that I made some sort of sense. All right. So now we get to do the other. So we're going to do a little bit of this. I'm going to do two of the letters. So I'm trying to pet them and figure out which way they go. Okay. So we gave that ruler back, didn't we? Darn it. I lost one of my rulers at Road to California, and I'm sad now. Oh, yeah. big classrooms are black holes. That, kind of that's are. just why. Really are. Somebody went home with a nice new Ulfa um, cutting or acrylic ruler. Sad. Okay, so let me do this. How about if I mirror it? Try to figure out placement without my ruler. I would use a ruler, guys, if I had one. Okay. I mean, your whole table is a ruler, but that's I hard. I can't put it on top of it. That's hard. Oh, there we go. Hey, look at that. That's a great way to index things. That's perfect. So what I would do is I would put a ruler here to get it straight across because that will be the hardest part is making sure that those stay actually fairly straight. Okay. So now I've got it about where I want it. You can put it however you want. Honestly, the easiest way would be to purposely make it crooked. That's what I do. You know what I mean? Sure. Like you could do like XOXO. Jaunty. That would jaunty. It would be a jaunty pillow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, word my on. words. <laughs> Sorry, that was adorable. Um, <laughs> it would, but if you put it in there so that they weren't perfectly straight, it didn't have to be, um, then it would be awesome. Okay, so where's my, so I'm gonna do, here's my straight edge for today. All right. So now I have a little line that I'm going to put my letters back and on. And you just sc scratch that into the nap with your stiletto. Yes. And it's just going to stay there. And, stay as, there. and until you don't want it anymore. Right. And got then it. If I, as soon as I swish that down, it'll go away. Okay. So I'm going to spray the back of these. I've got just, this is just an extra piece of cotton. Um, and then I've got my letters here and I'm going to spray the back of them. How, what did you use to mark the back of that, the, the pink? We use those um, friction marking the felt tip markers. So these, we, there was a little bit of a mission to find these. I went to mm -hmm. some, I went to some art supply stores looking, and almost all of the friction erasable pens were all the ballpoint style. But Mulkween, for example, here have uh, has inventory of these felt tip versions. Yeah, and can they're the you, fine can liner. You, can you show me the end? Can you take the cap off for yeah. me for a second? Sorry. That's all right. Jumping ahead. So this is what you want to, if you want to use a friction pen for when you're sewing, this is the kind to use. People grab those ballpoints all the time and I really don't like them. I mean, that's personal, but they catch in the back of this all the time. So they catch in the back of cuddle. They don't work very well for this. The, the felt tip marker works really well. And you want to make sure that you're using these in places that are not going to get really shown. So they're not, they're not technically a sewing tool uh, and they will reappear in the cold. So you can iron them and they'll go away. They will reappear if it gets too cold outside. Oh, so that's some, good. I've heard some real cool horror stories about people tracing out their um, like quilting lines on it and using using a friction pen and then sending their quilts in planes and having them arrive for the show with all of the quilting lines back because it was so cold in the storage. Oh, um, hang on, yeah, hang on. That sounds that sounds so. For things that you frustrating you know, that are just you and it's no big deal. But if you're doing anything that you don't want it to somehow get ruined, yes, you can just iron them back out again. But what a pain! Um, but this was on the back, so it's okay. So this is on the back. It's fine. I use it for things because I can erase them. So if I wanted to trace around the line and then I, it was showing on the edge, I could just take my iron to it and get rid of it. It'll be fine. Okay. So yes, they work very well for certain projects. All right. So now I've got mine on here. I did a little petting on there to make sure that the 
nap was going in the right direction, using my little line down there, get it fairly straight, check my nap one more time because I get scared of those things. Okay. So now we've got that in place. I didn't cut out the other two, but I've got two more that I can stick down there. Okay. So let's try this. All right. Now I want to use a little bit of this. So this is the water soluble stabilizer. This is the same stuff that we used here to trace that out. I think this is the Floriani brand. Oh, wait, there's a paper inside. There's insider info, literally. Okay. Oh, this is the heat removable. So this is not water. It's heat. But I don't really care because I don't use it that way ever. Okay. Got it. I only use it. You're gonna tear it. You're gonna tear it away anyway. Okay. I tear it. Now we know exactly what it was. See, it's great. Don't take these things out. Leave them in there forever. All right. You need more of those little wristband strappy things that you had. The uh, Kimberbell the, ones. The Kimberbell ones. Those mm -hmm. are super cool. They're, they're like the they old are. school. Uh, uh, I don't even know how to like snap wrist bracelets. They're like snap bracelets. Or, yeah, slap bracelets. Slap bracelets, and they have all the names of the different kinds of fusible and stuff mm -hmm. on them because all of them start to look the same. They do, and I can't tell if it's a cutaway or a tearaway. Uh -huh. Or a heat away, apparently. Right, or a heat away. All right, so now we're going to sew this on. Let me do all of my little finagling here. We're going to switch the foot out. Okay. So now it still has all right, I'm coming around. in here, but I took, I took right, off the, the big module here, and it's just a regular sewing machine thing in the job here. Think of a, think of a job. job. Te technical term. Uh, yes. Check. We'll say that's my mom's fault. That's fine. My dad's fault. <laughs> it's your dad's fault. <laughs> we should get a generations of crazy little words that we use for things. Weirdly, most people know exactly what I'm talking about when I call it a thing of job. I mean, they actually they actually made a a watch McCullet candy bar. Okay. So this you know. Has to, that's true. That's true. So let's see. If we can find, does anybody here have this machine? Yeah. I need, well, I got the hole. I need the light. There's no light on. I don't know where settings are. I'm going to try it. Settings. Oh, here we there go. There it is, light. light. Second choice. There we go. It says it's on. Shut it off and turn it back on. That's exactly what I just did there. No, okay. I'm going to shut the whole machine off and turn it back on because I really do need it. I prefer to have a light when I'm sewing. This is, you know, fixes what 90% of, of problems. There we go. There we go. Ta da. <laughs> Thank you. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, I actually I put this one on there and I didn't want that one. I want to oh, that foot. You want the move it foot? And Jeez. we also need to switch your needle. Yes. Is that true? Um, probably yes. Sorry, am I jumping ahead? No, no, you're reminding me of things like you're supposed to. That's okay. Why. <laughs> So yes, normally you would just put on a regular foot, but because we're sewing cuddle, we're going to put on what they call the mover foot, which is very much like my digital dual. So hopefully now I'll just know what I'm doing. <laughs> it's always it's always a guess. All right, so there, I think we're good. I should probably make sure I have my my needles somewhere, right? <laughs> they are over there by the cup. They were. Okay, yeah. All right. So now I'm going to switch it out so I can have, because yes, when you do embroidery, you just do it with your regular embroidery needle. And when we do sewing, we're going to do it with a 9014 stretch needle. I'm also going to change out that. Because this is embroidery fed. There it is. Sorry. All right. So now, so this is a question that we get a bunch when I'm doing classes. Especially in stores that are heavy embroidery stores, is that they have a lot of embroidery um, threads, and which is great. But you don't want to sew with an embroidery thread. They are not meant for holding stuff together. They're decorative stitches, so the, the thread is not nearly as strong. Even though it is polyester. So even often, though it's polyester. 
most often is polyester. Got yeah, it. exactly. It's just a different kind of thread. Its purpose is different. So we're gonna get this. Wrap that around. Do the up, down, around, back, forth. And I already checked this once and it does work. So we're gonna see if it'll work for me now. Oh man. Yeah, Love this it. machine is extra fancy. It's nice. All right, I'm going to put this up here. Hide that away. All right, now we're we'll getting started. So, should we start with the hard one or the easier one? Gosh, why do I do this to myself? Okay. Oh. <laughs> it's probably not that hard. I'm going to switch out my foot real quick, too. So, I want the open toe foot. And this one has the little plastic doohickey in there, which is... Fabulous. I'm going to hold down the fabric and let me see what I'm doing at the same time. Okay. All right. Let's start with the X. So we're going to say it that way. All right. I'm going to start with a corner and I'm going to come over here and we're going to pick a stitch. So we can do a zigzag stitch or we could do a um, like a buttonhole stitch. I don't know the stitches on this one quite as well where to find it on mine. So let's just do a little zigzag. Okay. Number four. Top number four. Oh, yeah. That one. Oh, oh, it doesn't do it in dual feet. Okay, fine. We'll do a zigzag. <laughs> How much I figured out. We just got here yesterday. All right. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Normally when I'm doing a zigzag, like I'm just using it to hold down things. And so I'll do like a five and a five. We're going to do it a three and a half and a three and a half today because I really want it to actually like hold this in place. It's not just tacking things down. And if I do it too big, what happens is trying to get around those letters, like a big zigzag. So if you come up here, a big zigzag up here would, um, on, if you from here to here, if I did it a five, it would go here and then here and then here and then here and then like it's too much to, it's too, the spacing is too big to actually control. And like here it would be like one and then I'd be all right now where do I go? Does that make sense? Totally. Like so, getting them a little bit smaller. And actually, I do it a sense. little. I'm gonna do it a little narrower because my letters are narrow. Okay, so let's see what happens. Okay. So this is what we're trying now. I'll let you know when we're done if it worked. Can we backtrack just a second? Do you know what embroidery needle was? Oh, there's no foot. I just realized we don't have a foot pedal. I could try to sew with this. Um, yours is going to be over there. I bet it works in the in the in your sewing machine. I'm going to sew like those crazy people who just sew without a foot. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> like those crazy people. I always see people do this at class, and I'm like, that's nuts. Okay. Oh, I have to lower it. Fine. All right. So we're going to go for it again. I just have to, like, keep a. I put it on my slow, like, turtle mode. Oh, look at that. It's going to work? It's going to sort of work. It's not going to be as good as my foot, but it's close. Okay. So now. We're learning new things. That's right. My, I want my needle to come down on that side. Whoa. Your hand, your hand cranking that basically into position? Yep. Okay. I'm going to put that down, that down. Is it going to go now? Oh, yeah. Okay. It's going to stitch. What about that. the, what, not that we, not that we aren't past this already, but what about your blanket stitch? That's what I was trying to find. Oh, that yeah, was you, you, you said buttonhole, but you meant I meant blanket. Okay, we were talking we were talking blanket stitch. There we yeah. go. And you could totally do that. And it would be really cute, but I don't know this machine well enough to get that figured out. Oh stop. Sorry. <laughs> All right. This is, do this. this is a lot. Somebody's I'm already already cool. mentioned that the doing this while going around the circle is gonna be super fun and I might need to help. <laughs> you might okay. need to be an octopus. Okay. A, ho a octopus. Okay, we'll see how that works. It's working okay so far, though. Let's see. I kind of want to make that a little bit. I feel like that length is still a little bit too big, so I'm going to shrink it down to a two and a half, too. All right, I'm coming okay. back over. We're experimenting on camera. Shocking, isn't it? I do this all the time. I'm like, I don't know. Let's see what happens. So we're just going to see what happens. Oh, there we go. 
Oh, then maybe I can like ease my speed up just a tiny bit. Oh. Did you that... see I went off? No. Because I can't zoom. Oh, okay. Good. Then nobody else could see that I didn't, didn't do that perfectly. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm looking over there at the TV in the room, and it's they pretty can see big. It pretty well. Okay. Dang it. They can see it better than I can. So I, think. I could do this a lot faster if we're doing this with a foot pedal, but hey. The panic. It's not going to be perfect, guys. It's close, but not quite. Oh, I see. You went one stitch too far, and now you're having to, to fight it, fight it back in. Okay. <sighs> I tell you. <laughs> you, 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 you know, I could probably get you a foot, right? You could, but then we'd have to stop everything. I mean, for like this is kind of thirty seconds. Thirty because seconds. Because I All always right. see people do this, and I'm like, why would you do that to yourself? <laughs> and really, like most of the time, they're actually like doing it to themselves. They actually want to sew without a foot. I mean, hey, you know, go with what you know. Well, I was told I asked somebody, um, I think when we were at road, and I was like, why do you do it that way? And she said, it's easier. I have more control. And I don't understand what the more control is. Okay. When I push the green button, I want it to stop where I pushed it. <laughs> it goes usually like one stitch it goes more, one right? one stitch more, and I'm like, ah, stop. See, now where it stopped where I wanted it to. Yes. On the luminar? Yeah. It usually stop at one hit the green button. And uh -huh. One to two stitches back. Then I have to think ahead. That's yeah. really hard. That's, yeah. <laughs> we have we have we have we have luminar experts in the room that are, are yeah. trying to help. And she said, if I push the green button, it usually will do one or two stitches past where I want it to be. Um, which I isn't. Figured mine out. Mine's two stitches. Two stitches. I have to stop it. I have to get my foot off. Two stitches before I want it to stop. Got it. Yeah. And I feel like there's definitely part of that. We talk a lot about like what machines work well. And I will say that there is definitely a, um, a variation on which ones work best for what. Look, this might not be so bad. All oh, right. Because you don't actually have to stop at the corners. You're no, really only going to have to stop like, once. And you could actually probably overshoot a little bit and it would be okay. Yeah. It's a challenge. I like this. Look, I'm learning something new today too. Oh, hey, look at that. Control. Mom, mom, mom Thanks. brought a foot. Thanks, mom. Always saving me. I appreciate it. Because <laughs> you know what? That inside circle is going to be going to be rough. It's going to be a little, a little tighter. The key really was making that smaller, though. No, oh, this the, the is smaller, but well, the, slower. The, the zigzag smaller and then the actual stitching slower. Got it. I'm like, which button do I push? <laughs> it feels like when you're like learning to drive a car and you're like trying to figure out what your feet are supposed to do. It's a little bit how I feel like my yeah. fingers and, right now. And two months later, you have to buy a new clutch. Right, exactly. <laughs> you have talked yeah, to my dad. I, 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 I talked to myself. Okay. I'm... All right. <laughs> but so yes. Put the foot down. Turn All right, we're gonna put the, we're gonna put the foot on for the inside circle. All right. See if I do Brand new foot. It's a model two. <laughs> oh, nice. That's funny. I'm not sure what that means exactly, but I do think it's funny. <laughs> All right. Let's pop this baby on there. So that's the difference. It's funny because we had this happen with um, with us because the embroidery machine doesn't use a foot pedal and the sewing machine does. And I remember one time we were doing something and I didn't have, my, I didn't have the foot pedal or I had it. I, we packed it into the wrong thing. I remember, yeah. not, I remember that experience. Yeah. Anyway, lots to keep track of. So and you know, all right. So now let's new machine. See how I can do it. Later. All right, barefoot sewer in the house. I did it. I showed your toes. I know. How much I say don't. Okay, now I put my speed up a little bit more because I actually have some control over it. Not all the control, but you know, some of it. So this is where it's so tight that I do have to like pick up and move things. Oh yeah, the control is a million times better with my foot. <laughs> I don't even have to think about it. That's when I'm like, move fast, grab the button, hit it fast. Yeah, so if you sew without a foot, I would love to hear your reason why. <laughs> really, now I'm like, that whole control thing is not true. Maybe it is for them. I think it depends on how like you learned. I'm sure, sure that if somebody taught you or like you were never took sewing lessons, 
Like how often do actually on YouTube videos, how often do they show like what their feet are doing? Not very often. Not very often. On those tutorial on tutorials. Those tutorials. Those tutorials. Like, <laughs> the the, you know, the, the other tutorials ones. Tutorials that are out there. Yes. I don't think we ever really talk about like what we do with our foot and how much control we have with it. So that's interesting. I wonder now I want to do a survey. All right. I want to find out the truth behind it. The other other machine you use when you use the the um the featherweight. You also, it has like this uh, extra switch that you flip to go in reverse and you oftentimes will do backstitching mm -hmm. and I just watch how fluidly you have that behavior down mm -hmm. because you learned on that machine right? and you're really, you're, you're proficient at it. So yeah. I'm sure that folks that didn't, didn't have a, a foot pedal learned yeah. how to use the it's machine. But, yeah. And I didn't actually, I didn't, I didn't learn on that machine, <clears> but I had for a long time, I had a FOSS 130, which runs that same way with the. Um, the featherweight, how it runs up and down for your reverse. And my FOF 130 does that too. And so, and I stood for years on that thing. So yeah, you can, you flip it and you do, you get very proficient at certain movements. And I think that's part of that is muscle memory of just sewing for a long time that you do start to learn this. So I'm doing this with the, obviously with my little stiletto and pulling it out. So I will say this, um, this is always a little scarier with these stitches because they're bigger stitches. So I'm a little bit more careful and you'll end up getting the little plastic bits kind of stuck in here. So it'll be a little bit more fiddly to get the plastic out of there. Is it plastic? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I say that and I'm like, they're gonna come back at me and be like, that's not plastic. Yeah, See, plastic. but you can get it out of the edges. You just kind of can pull it out. All right. Are people, people telling us why they sew with their not foot? Um, oh, the other thing um, that, that people like is the, the knee lever. Yo, the knee lever is so good. Oh, I so do. it doesn't really work out that well. I mean, you could. It you does could... not work when I'm standing. No, the <laughs> knee lever is a little funky to use it's when a, you're standing. A, That's true. What's a, the, um, the, karate, like the like a karate kid move? <laughs> <It went totally>. <laughs> <laughs> I would have some thigh muscles, man. <laughs> that one leg up all the time. <laughs> and some good balance. That's yeah, hilarious. <laughs> yeah, the knee lever is is really a game changer in though and how fast you can um, pivot and turn and all that kind of good stuff. Oh, what all was right. the machine you used the other day that had the extra foot pedal on it that had a programmable oh, it was feature? A it was, it was a, that it was, was a really interesting. And you could you could program the second foot pedal to, to raise and lower the presser foot oh. and all kinds of stuff. Look, I gave up early. I just really, I was like, oh, well, that yeah. ripped off easily. And that's because I didn't stitch down the first side of the X. <laughs> oh, well, wow. I have to finish the other, so I'll go back and finish that. Yeah. So that's how that looks with the this is the zigzag. So we settled on the three and a half or two and a half. I think it's two and a half two by and two and a half. By two and a half. You can do a straight stitch. Straight stitch is very hard to keep exactly from the edge and you can totally see it. So I do not recommend it. Okay. Let me show you a couple other samples that we have here. So these were some samples that I did quite a while ago to show how these work. Um, so this is a straight stitch here which after I fluff it, it kind of hides, but you can definitely see it. Like in person, I can see where that line is and it has to be kept very even or you just notice it, okay? The other way that you can do it, so these are um, zigzags and that blanket right. stitch. Um, so this is a tighter one. These were done on two different machines. So I did one on my Bernina and one on my Baby Lock and I can't remember which color was which now. Um, they're basically the same, but the numbers are slightly different. On this one, I could see that they're a little tighter than on here, even though they're set to the, technically the same measurement. Okay, and then this was on the sparkle. Sparkle's amazing. Okay. <laughs> All right. This was the same, so this is a bigger, a wider blanket stitch. And these are zigzag. So the, we could we could say that we could probably go back and figure out what the numbers were on these, but really you, this is more like an experiment that you need to do at home based yes. on your your machine and also how fast you're moving it through the machine changes the stitch length too. Totally, correct? totally. And what I would do is I would take just a little piece if you want to do the applique on your heart like this. I would take one of your little scraps and I would put some here and I would practice a few different stitches to see what you like. Okay? So 
whatever suits you. The zigzag is fast. The blanket stitch takes a lot longer because basically it's like two stitches. It does like these stitch stitch. Like I think it does two stitches and it goes back and then it comes over and then it goes, it does this whole like over thing. Everywhere has two threads. Got it. Does that make sense? So yep. everything is stitched twice. So it takes a lot longer. It's a lot slower stitch to do, but it's also super cute. So it's kind of, you know, which one do you want to do? Up to you, but there are all three ways. I just don't recommend the straight stitch is not my favorite. And especially if I were doing something little like this, trying to keep that even as I went around. Sounds torturous. General, general cuddle question here. Um, the right. edge of cuddle doesn't unravel. Right, right. Because so it's a it's, knit. It's great for applique. Because it is a knit fabric, it doesn't fray at all. So you can cut it whatever shape, however you want it. And the only thing that matters is that you tack it down well. It's not going to like pull up between or um, like fray up between those. So like you've done it with cotton, it will definitely fray along those lines. Even if you stitch it really well or do a blanket stitch or whatever, it will still kind of fray up in there, which is why a lot of times we use backings and that sort of thing with it. Cuddle, you don't need to. It's not going to fray. It's not going to go anywhere. You can do basically anything with it, and it's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, it's great for applique. And I love it because there's so many different textures, too, so you can really kind of play with the textures and get the look that you want, depending on which backing you use, which topping you use. So, like, on this one, you can see the edges a lot more than you can see. I mean, granted, they're two different ways. But, like, this one, you can see the edging is down here. Like you can't really get to that very well because it's stuck under all this other nap that's over the top. So I can't see how imperfect that is. So that's one of the perks of using a Lux Cuddle where this one is there right on top of each other. So you can see it better. Okay. So just, you know, different factors of it. It's not one that one is necessarily better than the other. Okay. Do you know what I want to do? We're going to do this. We're going to do the other XO. Oh, I got yeah. them pretty close to what it, Oh, you got the spacing between the letters. I see it. Pretty, I got it pretty, darn pretty good. much perfect. Nice I'm work. I'm happy with that. Okay, let me see. I don't have my tape right here, so I'm gonna pin this. Let's go back over and we're gonna stitch this, and then we'll sew the pillow together. Okay. So you're gonna stitch. Oh, oh, you're not gonna applique. You're just gonna I'm just, just gonna, gonna do it. Yeah, we were, we were. Yeah, this is gonna be fun. Actually, I gotcha. Like I said you could do it. Let's so let's do it. Really <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna find a fancy stitch. I'm just gonna use, like I'm a just satin gonna use stitch. A or, stitch. Or, oh, okay. All right. Just because I want to see, because I think it will give it kind of like an embossed look. So I'm gonna go around it twice. Is what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna do the O for right now because I want to show the rest of the pillow when we're gonna run out of time. Well, I mean, really not run out of time. We're just going to have people start leaving. <laughs> do, you, do you know who, who Teresa's Valentine is? You? I was going to, I was actually going to say experimenting like this whole, like, like just this, <laughs> like this whole, love? like, yeah, what do you, what do you love is just like figuring out new processes. It's true. It's true. And here we are getting to do it together. That's right. On hey. camera. Happy Valentine's. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Okay, so I'm doing it twice around just so I can get it to like stick down a little bit more, maybe. Again, experimenting. And this straight stitch is a three and a half. A three and a half stitch thing, yeah. Just because I like it, it goes a little faster. Okay, so I'm going to do a box stitch there, cut it, and move to the inside. And we'll do it there too. So this one is that. That whole middle thing. And this is just a the white thread and it, yep. on the pink, and it's just going to bury down in, in It's just going to bury, but I think it will show up in a way that actually will work. But we'll see. We'll see. I could be totally wrong. Well, we're not going to see the color of the, the thread yeah, for sure. You won't the thread at all. It'll be like embossed. Cool. So it'll just sort I'm of excited. hide in there. Sorry. Okay, almost around. I think that was twice around. I don't know, it's really hard to tell. <laughs> Oops. All right. At least some things are very similar to your machine. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, some things are very small. Great. Right. So fascinating. 
There's little bits. Oh, so it tucked in there. Oh, it, and it's because there was the black sharpie. Uh huh. Was on the stabilizer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, which actually, I'm like, not terrible, but maybe if you're gonna do that with um. That'll all, like that'll this. come off the first time you wash it, though. I think so. Yeah. I think so, but honestly, I don't really care because it makes it show up. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. All right. Okay, so I need to be more careful right here and get those two on the same line. We we'll pretend they're they're right. All right. But it did work like I thought it would. We just emboss it. Yeah, that's super interesting. All right, thanks for experimenting there. Great. Okay, so now we're done with that. We're gonna make a pillow. We're gonna make all right. All right. So now you can go back around like we were. Okay, dokie. Right. Okay. I decided to get all crazy with it. I was like, wait, we could. Okay, so that would be a time that if you don't want that ink to show up, if you use the friction markers, that would totally work. Or like the blue markers or the, these guys. This is the other one I have. This one is, um, I think it's Dritz. It's a Mark Be Gone. I can't remember. I'm going to say that might be Clover because it's actually it's Mage. Um, okay, but this is the little blue marker that would totally work on there too. I see it on there. That one come off with water? Yes. Like just the blue one show up. It works on here. Oh, yeah. uh, there we go. The purple one will work. Then I you probably can't see it on there. Oh yeah. me over. There we go. There we go. Okay. So the purple one I can see. So you could put that on there and then if it got onto your fabric, you just wash it down. It's totally fine. You're never gonna see it again. All right. I'm going to try something like that because I think that's super interesting. You could draw whatever and then like put it on there and stitch over it. We might have you draw some things. Off. I'm just saying. Check. Um, he's an artist. I am. I am a creative. <laughs> <laughs> we go around it's like, all right, where are we going with this? Yeah. I almost said I'm not. And then I knew he would come over the camera at me. So. <laughs> <laughs> So I'll change it. All right. So once we've gotten our embroidery well down or our applique, however you want to do it, or if you're just doing two heart pieces, you're going to have your two heart pieces backed with the batting. Okay. The reason we do this, and I do this with pillows all the time, is because it gives kind of a solid backing to it. So when we stuff it, it will actually look much nicer than if it were just the layer of cuddle. Because the cuddle is soft and it's a knit, wherever you get it com not completely even, it's going to kind of bump and you'll see those bumps. And when you're stuffing it, it's really easy to get it not perfectly evenly stuffed. Okay. So I find it much better if I put a little bit of backing behind it. So it worked really well for the embroidery, but it actually all works really well for the pillow as well. Okay. So I've got my two hearts. They're cut out in the same size. What I need to do is sew the uh, strip on here. So this will create a band in the middle. I have just give them away. So this is this piece here. Okay. The thickness, the of, thickness the, of, of the candy. So we're not sewing the two pieces together. This is what makes it actually like a big 3D heart. Okay. So I'm going to start on the side because I want to come back around. I want to start. I started on the side before. Let's start it on the end and see what happens. How's that? <laughs> Are we experimenting right. again? Sorry. I guess so. We just went sideways again. Okay. <laughs> We're going to see how hard this is. I want to start about a half an inch from the end. Because that's our seam allowance? Is I'm going to come back around and, yeah, I have to sew them together there. So when I did it on the side, it was fine. And how? Why did you choose this much to hang over the edge? Mostly because I know I need to cut about that much off when I get done. Yeah, okay. that was are you are you Are you playing chicken? <laughs> I'm playing a little bit of chicken. But I cut about that much off of each end before when I did it. Okay. So it's only sort of chicken. Because okay. I was like, you just you just seemed very certain of how much you wanted to stick <laughs> over the edge there. That's and because you might have seen there are a few of these pillows laying around. Okay, so I'm going to pin around here. Um, when I pin bands like this, I tend to want to pin perpendicular to the edge. It just works a little bit better. And part of that is because we're going to come around this curve, which is always easier if I do it perpendicular. All right, so I'm just going to start that way and keep on going. As I come around here, I'm actually going to give it a little bit of a stretch. Oh. To get it to fit in here. Because that's what we do with curves. It's why we want to use, like when we do, um, if you do like a scalloped edge on a quilt, you have to use a bias binding to get around those curves. And we're kind of going to use the inherent stretch of 
this the same way. Okay. So um, all my pins. Okay, and I'm just gonna, what is that doing in there? Did you see that pin? That's terrible. Okay, if you have pins like so this, sad. Them. Bad. That is bad. So sad. So sad. It had some hard use somewhere, and I don't know what happened. I don't remember that clunk that should have happened <laughs> when that hit. Okay, so I'm just giving it a tiny bit of stretch. So just bink. Okay, and now when I get down here, I want to stop straight down from there. So I'm going to put my needle so it comes down here, and I'm going to stitch, and I'm going to stop when I get to this pin. Okay. okay, so this is the way I sew this together. It makes it much easier for me because once I get to here, this has to come this direction. So all of a sudden I have a 3D thing in here that's difficult to go around. So I'm going to do the easy part first, and then we'll come and pin the next side. Oh, that darn zircle just attracted the bad pin back. Okay, so I'm going to put this up to a 3.5, a straight stitch. Come on over. Let's stitch our way around this. Okay, so I put my foot down. I'm going to start where I put that pin because that was about a half an inch. Hang on, let's, let's talk about this. So straight, this straight, straight stitch. stitch. 3.5. 3.5. You started in a little bit and back stitched. Yep. Okay. And we'll see it when I come edge. back around. All right. Okay. And I'm just going to kind of keep this over. So one of the things is this will want to sort of go that direction, the top will. So I kind of will keep Looking this is it, normally sure what the parallel pinning would stop, but because right. we're, we're approaching a curve. Right. And it's kind of interesting because this is um, stabilized with the batting behind it. It doesn't oh. want to curl in or curl under like you often have that issue. It won't happen with this because that batting is on there. Okay. So I'm just going to come around this curve. I'm not going to sew over my pins. And the biggest part here is just trying to keep a smooth line as you go around. And part of that is not stopping too often on these curves. So I feel I find that when I stop on a curve, that's almost inevitably where I somehow jerk it over a little bit. And then I get weird spots. Luckily, Cuddle will mostly hide it. So I'm just gonna watch this until I get real close. I'm gonna take one more and then a back step. Oops, nope. Start, stop, doesn't operate with the foot controller. Yes. Because I got a foot controller now. Thanks again, Mom. Okay. <laughs> this part would have been much harder. Much harder. <laughs> All right. So now I get to this point and I have to get this to spin up here. Right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip my fabric. Oh, in the yeah, seam. Tiny the seam stitch, or flips there. Yep. And then I'm going to get this to twist. And this is going to have to kind of come over a little bit because I don't want to get a pucker in here. Okay. So you can see like I can't just keep this all nice, nice and neat and have this come over. It's not going to happen. I have to kind of fiddle with it a little bit. Okay. Then I'm going to get that here. I'm going to get another one and then we're going to go back over the table and pin the rest of it. Okay, because I want to pin all the way around. I will say that on one of them, I decided that I would try to get a little feisty and just fix this corner and then start stitching. That was not a good idea. I uh, I did some unsewing and I learned my lesson. So go back and make sure that you pin the second side too. Okay. And like I said, it's just a tiny little stretch. We're not trying to really stretch it a bunch. Okay, it's just really keeping it so that it will kind of go around that curve nice and neatly. And work my way around. So I did find that um, I could do it this way, where I stitch all the way around, uh, or I pin it one half and then I do the other. I did find that I, I have a certain amount left over at the end. Of course, I did not measure that amount. But then I cut it off the same amount off the second one, and then I pinned it here and here, and then stitched all the way around. Yeah, so I was able to find like the middle point. But this way, it's just fine. So there's just one thing when you make something several times, you'll find easier ways for you. Easier ways. For Got you. it. So the band that we're using, it was, was it cut with the fabric? It's cut with the fabric. It's cut 60 inches with the fabric, three inches wide. Got it. Oh, look, I played chicken really good there. 
Yeah. I do this. Why do I do this to myself? <laughs> I was like, I think it's plenty. I think I cut that much off both sides. I probably did. And I probably stretched it differently this time. Oh, I hear people laughing at me. <laughs> <laughs> and rightly so. And, and, <laughs> you want to talk about why my tongue is bleeding? <laughs> why is my I'm tongue bleeding? <laughs> I may do this for a profession, but it doesn't mean I'm perfect. Okay. I get that in there. I want to start. So this is the the funky part here is I need to. Well, that's a lot further than on my <laughs> Wow, that's a stretch. Okay. So I need to start it where I ended it, basically. Okay. So I'm going to go forward a little, take a couple of stitches. So I will say that at this little point, it's real easy. And I think I did it there. Oh, no. It's really easy to catch a little pucker at that corner. So if you do, just clip it and fix the corner later. Um, but it is hard to, to not always get a little pucker down there. I was wondering about that. What? Some uh, after some uh, one of our our audience had mm -hmm. foot surgery and they had to learn how to use the oh. the, the button when you know See? the foot pedal wouldn't actually work for them for a while. That seems like a very suitable reason. And you can totally you know it's totally doable. You can yeah. learn. I'm sure you could. I just I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I did my little practice there though. That was good, right? Right. I practiced it. Okay, so I'm just trying to mark where my corner is on here so I know where to stop sewing. Because I'm going to actually get pretty finicky about that little part now. Yeah, oh, like a lock stitch or something there. Yeah. So so reinforce that stitch. corner. Okay, so now I need to sew these together so that they are um, parallel, like you would sew them together if they were in a long strip. They're kind of coming at each other at rude angles. So I need to kind of bend this so that they're straight. Okay, so I'm matching up my raw edges here. I'm going to put a little pin in here. I'm just going to pinch this. So this is one part about doing it on the end that is a slash good bad thing. Is it this, um, the thickness here at the corner. So I've done it before. I'll show you the other ones are in the side. And I'm not sure which one I like better. We're going to see. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to aim for right there. So I want to get it to go straight down here. Okay. So I'm going to eyeball that because I'm crazy. Uh, slash brave. <laughs> and I'm just going to eyeball it. Okay. Sounds like something's not happening right in there. I heard that. Tunk, tunk, tunk. I okay. We're just going to get through the next part. We'll be done. Oh, here's another good reason to not use your foot pedal. What's that? If you if your if your dog wants to sleep on your feet under oh. your sewing machine, <laughs> see, I knew. <laughs> and then the next thing you know, it, your sewing machine just goes. I knew they have reasons <laughs> why they wanted to do it that way. Okay, so the nice thing about this is it is very nice here at the end. Okay, oh yeah, totally that's that's a nice finish. There. That's a nice finish. So it comes right down there. I am going to trim this off because it's a big bunch of bulk down here. Okay, so I'm going to trim this off. Trim this off the other seam allowance that I stitched. Okay. And then I'm going to actually trim this off down here. So you can trim off all of the batting in your seam allowances if you want to. It does make for a smoother finish. And I would recommend it if you're using Cuddle 3 on the outside. Because you'll be able to see that kind of little lip in here. But we're using hide on this one. So that's fine. And hide. And Hides. That's crazy. <laughs> There's a seam in there. I can't see it at all. All right. So now we're to here. Okay. So now we're going to do the other side. Then. So now we need to sew this onto here. This is 
a part to be careful of. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to find where it goes across here. So I'm actually going to look at the grain lines because I cut this fairly straight. So I don't want this to be twisted like this where I can see the grain is super off. Can you guys see that? Yes. Okay, so I want to get it so that it's basically straight across here. I'm going to pin this here. Okay, that's where I want my middle of the heart to go on the other side. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I and I know that the end seam here is the bottom of my heart. So this is where I'm going to say so before I, I you could sew the whole strip together and do it this way. But I'm going to do it this way. So I'm going to get this. This part seems like an important part to match. <laughs> it's an important part to match. So I'm going to actually move this so I can pin this a little bit better. Because basically what I want this pin to go straight down the middle of my heart again. Okay. So this is where, because it has to be a half an inch away from there. So I can kind of eyeball it here. It's going to go over there. I'm going to make that match with my pin here. That when I'm stitching... Those pins are going to match about a half an inch away. Okay. So it's a little fiddly, not terrible. Put it from that side so I can see it, and then we're going to pin all the way around again. So you can see the, um, the stabilizer. It's just going to stay on there. That's what it'll look like when you're done. I did do one where I put the stabilizer on first. I just stitched it with the stabilizer. And we'll say that wasn't as good. Okay. So we're going to sew it from the other side this time because I want to see how it's different. Okay. So when I grab this, I just give it a tiny little ink pull. Oh, you're you're tucking the the tucking the nap down into the seam with your with your finger. Only as you sort go. of, but really, I'm kind of giving this a stretch and not stretching this. That's what I'm trying to do there. But my finger just happens to do that. Oh, I see. It, cause that's I'm, right, because that's right. Because stretching the band. Oh, I see. Bit. If I stretch this, this can, this fabric can stretch quite a lot. And I don't want it to. It won't stretch so much with the batting there, which is great if I keep it together. Yeah. You're doing this magic thing with your hands that makes it look super easy. And like there's like four different things going on all at once. Now I now I'm starting to understand everybody catching what she's doing with like so her, the, her, her middle finger and her pointer finger. Right, this kind of tugs it, <laughs> and then I pinch it, and I hold it, and then I pin it. Yeah, dexterity. You have it. <laughs> <laughs> trying, man. I'm trying. Okay. And all that does is really it keeps it so that the heart is flat around the edge. If you don't do it, it'll sort of start to pucker weirdly around those uh, curves of the heart. Okay, so we're still going to do this one side at a time, one, one side of the heart. I just find it way easier. Okay, so now I've got it around the curve. So now I need to get this to match. Okay. So good luck with that. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> You're being sneaky this, this, this morning. We'll see what happens here. Okay, so now you I'm gonna, got this. I hope so. It worked every other time, but you know, things that have worked every other time. So this is where like, I've got a little bit of extra, extra in here. So I'm going to feed a little bit in, but then I'm going to kind of go back over a little bit of my, my heart here and get it to, to flatten out. You see that? I see that. Okay. So that's why I picked that the middle part first. And then I kind of just go and see what has to happen. But because I know it'll fit, it did on the other side. Right? It has to fit in those those places. Sure. Yeah. All right. So now let's sew that. Okay. So I'm going to start at the pin. Sew my way around. So basically, one side might have been a little bit longer than the other because of how you stretched it, but that point has to line up. So then you just keep having the, the longer side until the difference is gone. Sort of. I don't Basically. even. I don't even have it at this point because I don't really have a half. I'm just kind of because that curve changes the way that it is. Like I can't divide half because I don't know. No, no, very sure. So it really is just kind of um, uh, evening it out and just working. So the thing is, we have a lot under here, so I want to make sure that this stays tucked aside. 
So I'm not gonna be able to sew quite as fast as I did before because I want to bring that over and make sure that it stays nice and flat. And we don't need to use batting on the band strip. I don't use batting on the band. It doesn't seem to make a big difference. It really just gives it one more thing for me to, you know, argue with at some point. So, yeah. And the band, it would take the stretch out of it. And we don't want that. We want it to stay slightly stretchy. And that's, so, that's specifically because you cut it on the width of fabric. That it's a little stretchy? Yeah. Mm, yep. Exactly. Thanks, that's Jackie. Good note. Yep. And so this, we're de I'm dealing with that thing where I said, like, where it'll curl. So this is on the bottom and it wants to curl just a little bit. So I just have to keep kind of playing with it and bringing it out. And once I get to a flat spot, I won't do that anymore. But on the curve, it definitely wants to wants to do that because you remember if you stretch it on the curve, what happens? It curls. Or you stretch it at all, it curls. Mm. And so that's what's happening, which is just part of how this is made. So it's just part of it. There's no way to make it not do that. I always like it when people ask me, how do I make it not do that? I'm like, you can't. Like, <laughs> it's just part of the fabric. Okay, make sure that that's... I feel like this is a, a wrestling match. It isn't so much a wrestling match as it is just like <laughs> keeping even. I mean, I could be a lot less finicky about it, and it probably would be fine. But I'm trying to keep it, make sure that it is. So the easier way of doing it is sewing it from the top side. So remember I said I was going to sew it from this side? To that, if it was that's different. true. That would be the difference, is that I have to fight that curl a lot more, which isn't as much fun. So let's sew it from the right side, the other side. This time. All right. So now what we need to do is we need to leave a space where we're going to turn it. So if I sew up the whole other side, we're in trouble because then I can't turn it inside out. So we're going to, not surprisingly, put a little mark in here where we're going to hand stitch it. I like to put it about the width of my fingers. So I can get my fingers inside of there. I'm going to do the same thing here. So I've marked it with my pins. And I'm going to come up this direction and do the same thing. I'm going to clip this just next to here so it can bend a little bit. And then I can get this to match. All right. So now I know about how far from the end my turning hole is going to start. And I'll put one here. So I'm going to stitch. A little stay stitching on each of these sides. All right, we do this a lot on things that we're going to turn, and it really makes it seems like this little thing that shouldn't make that big of a difference, and it makes a huge difference. I'll show you. We're going to do this, and I'll pin this a little bit, and then we'll do this um, stitching on the other one. But it makes a big, big difference in how easy it is to do the actual finishing stitch because the fabric likes to move. And if I don't have a guideline on where my half inch seam allowance is to hand sew it, I just kind of have to guess. Okay. So that was only one layer. You so weren't sewing layer. anything together. You were just adding, again, you're just adding yep. a, a, a guide stitch basically. On either side. And you can see where that line is. So when I sew this together, I'm going to be able to see where that's at. So then I'll go ahead and pinch this. So and I'm going to sew this one little end here. Okay. Oh, that's what happened. Got a little on the other side. And I'm just going to take a couple of these that stitch out. I did back stitch, so it should get down there just fine. Okay. And if I was scared about it, I could go over it again. Scared might not be the right word. That might be a little dramatic. Con 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 <laughs> concerned that it was not going to be stitched well? So I was a little worried that it was, it was going to not hold perfectly. Okay, so now I've got my two stitching lines, the stay stitching lines stuck together. I'm gonna come under here. I'm gonna put my foot down. Okay. I'm gonna put my needle down. There we go. And I'm gonna twist it. And then, nope, not what I wanted. Nope, not what I wanted. There we go. Which button do I push? Okay, so I'm gonna come off the edge, come back, and then I'm gonna stitch down. That okay. little L stitch is a reinforcement stitch for the turning hole. Yep, exactly. I'm going to show you exactly why that works well. Okay, so then I would go ahead and I would take, pin this up here, and then evenly pin this all the way around. Okay, and then sew that. And then we have our turning hole. So you'll see each side is like this. 
Okay. Then, yep. we, then we go ahead and turn it. Then so I'm we're skipping. We're skipping ahead. Here, skip ahead. here we are. We're it's, gonna we're gonna do a, a, a step out. Basically. Okay. So once we've stuffed it, I've stuffed this. So we're, I'm gonna show you how to hand stitch this. Um, but I wanted to talk to you too a little bit about polyfill. So we talk about polyfill a lot. There's a couple of different kinds. So this is the newer bag, I think. We got it tied shut here. So. Is this the no. is this the same set? This is this is what I have here. Oh yeah, here it is. So there we, we go. have three different kinds today. Okay. So silky polyfill is almost always what I recommend for when we're doing stuffed animals because it's super soft, it's squishy. Let's see if I can open this up. Did you put a rubber band on it? I did not. Did Mary do that? She did not. No, I already accused her just now, and she was like, "Uh-uh, not me." Somebody else was somebody else was helping. Else was. Okay, so I'm gonna pull out a little bit of this so you can kind of see the difference. All right. So this is the silky polish. This is the Which thing. used to be used to be royal, royal silk. silk. You might find that in the store still. There might be some inventory of that left, but it's now silky. Silky polyfill. Silky polyfill. So if you find royal same silk, stuff. it is the exact same stuff. And I get that question a lot. Okay, so you can see the two differences there. This one is Royal for Silky. This is Ultra Plush, and this is regular polyfill. So this is the stuff that a lot of people are very familiar with. It's very clumpy, okay? It is not my favorite. I really don't use it for anything but to show you. Um, this is the Ultra Plush, and this is kind of a blend between these. It has the, the coarser fibers that this does, but it's not as clumpy. So it's a little looser here, okay? This is the silky, and you can see it's super fine fibers, okay? The thing that I found is that I can get this really, really small. Which okay. basically means that if you're doing a pillow with it, it doesn't necessarily have right. a lot of body. So this is about the same amount, and I can't get it quite that small, okay? So this has more, yeah, more oomph. Like, I can do this, and it's got... Staying power. This one does not. Okay. <laughs> Yay. I can even clap right through it. Um, so this is super great for squishy stuffies that you want to hug and yummy. But what I found is when I did it in the pillow and I filled it most of the way, I filled it with a whole bag and then it was still like squish. So I went and I got the other stuff, which is ultra plush. Let me see if I can undo this so you guys can see the difference. So there is a difference. It's one of those things that I think is so interesting is that we often don't realize the difference between these pro products. We go to the store and we're like, I don't know, which one's cheapest? I'll get that. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a difference. So this is polyfill. They're all polyfill products. Okay, they're all from Fairfield. They're just different. So this is kind of the medium grade that I think is really good for pillows. So that's right. what we're using today. All right. Especially when you left the batting on the front and the back of these two, right? Mm -hmm. Because uh, like you were saying before, regular polyfill with the cuddle because it's a knit, it might show a little bit of clumping. Exactly. Uh, but the and batting fixes it. that. It does. It exactly. evens it out. Do you have my needle? There. She has my needle. She's nice enough to, to prep it for me there. Thank you. All right. So here is, I want to show you how we close it. So we want to um, take it and we can see the lines. You guys can see that in there. There we go. So the, those are the those guide lines. stitching lines that I did before. So I'm going to come back under here in the seam where it's already caught, just outside of those lines. And I'm basically just going to do a ladder stitch where I go past it. So I'm on this side of the stitching here. Then on this side, I'm going to go on this side of the stitching. And I'm going to create these little ladder rungs here. I want to point out something. When you did those reinforcement, the L, the L stitches mm -hmm. at the ends of the holes, mm -hmm. it automatically turns the seam allowance right. down inside. Yep. At so the it, at the right at the right width. Exactly. And it prevents the curling that can sometimes happen and it makes it just fall right inside. So if I pull this, you can actually see where that where it's going to close. Where if I don't have those L brackets, it does not do that at all. Okay. It's just a lot more to fight. It is. So it's it's kind of just like this little thing that if you do it just just the briefest little bit before, you know, it takes not very much time before you finish it, it actually will make this so much easier because now I get a really nice even half inch seam allowance on each side that will be very obvious when I start to pull it close that it stays in a straight line. So what I found is if I don't do this, 
what I get is a seam allowance that varies incredibly. And Fra- so, you know, Frankenheart. Yeah. So the whole side of it here where I sew it shut, like it's all straight, straight. And then one area will be like, you know, and then it's terrible. It's terrible. Just obvious. Very obvious. Super and, weird. And this looking. fixes it. This does. So we're just going to stitch up here. So if I were giving this to a kid, I would probably do really tiny stitches or I would go back over it twice because kids like to stomp on things. And, you know, try to break your heart, but they can't do it. All right. Let's see if I can get that pulled a little tighter. You'll see I have two, two um, threads here, a long needle. Okay. I'm just going to go along here. Do this a little bit faster and we'll get up to the top and I'll show you how to knot it. So if you were giving it to a kid, you could ouch, stitch it twice. And so you speed up and now you're bleeding. Now I'm bleeding. <laughs> no, not yet. That was this morning. Yeah, it'll be fine. But it is different because one side has interface or the batting and one doesn't. So they will work differently. So in here too, you can actually feel it where this where the uh, the stitching is, which is nice. Too. So if you can't see it, the, oh, the guide, the guide it. stitch. Yeah, you can do it by, by feel. By feel, and then it will just start to turn in at the right place. And I can kind of just take these stitches. Okay, and you can see how nice and even that makes it along the edge, and that's really the whole point of that is because what I found is it was super obvious if I didn't take care to get a nice half inch. Okay, so I'm gonna sew this. The end. I try to go past the end. That's my stitching before. Past where the hole actually is. And into the seam that I sewed by machine so that it's nice and secure there. And that's where I secure my seam. So or your knot. where your knot is going to be past that L bracket is on the past, outside. Past Got it, it into the machine stitching part because that's nice and strong. And then I'm just going to shove it through somewhere. Grab it. And that way the tail gets buried inside the pillow and you're not going to accidentally cut the tails off. Gotcha. Clip that. Jackie okay? says she uh, uh, she knots a, a, in a couple of places along yeah. that just, you know, to, yep. to, just to make yep. sure. Just to secure it. And so if you're going to stitch that real well because you're going to give it to a kid, it's really important that you get that knot so that you can. Look at, how Look at that. that. Pretty Aww. good. Okay. Where are the other? Let me grab the other one real quick. I'll show you two different as well. There's three. Okay, so there's this one, this one, this one. Super cute. I threw my other sample on the floor. I was busy. Okay, <laughs> so there's all sorts of ways of doing it. This is the applique version, the um, embroidery version. You can do it with Cuddle 3, Lux Cuddle, whatever you want to do. It has so much uh, flexibility. The other thing is, you can totally just have it plain. Okay, they're super cute. Just plain. Do them however you want to. All right. The flexibility is up to you. All right. So I think we have probably a winner by now. <laughs> there we go. Maybe. Yeah. Okay, where is it? There's Shelly T. So Shelly, congratulations. You will win a beginner box. So we will send you a beginner box if you send us all of your information. So get a hold of us on Facebook and uh, through Messenger. Send us your name, mailing address, phone number, all that good stuff, and we will send a beginner box out to you so you can do your own projects. If you are interested, you can, um, like I said, you can email me for the embroidery patterns. Use the embroidery. Okay, or you can go to the blog and download the pattern and um, applique letters for that project. Is that right? It is. It's, that was twice it did that. Okay. Oh. I think we're done, everybody. Okay. Quick, quick, say happy sewing before it All does right. it again. Happy sewing. See you next week. Bye. <laughs>